On the way over here, I was wondering what I was going to talk about today, and then I thought I'd tell you about this little incident that happened to me when I was back in college. Way back in college. Freshman year. There were only three elements in the chemistry lab at that time. Earth, wind, and fire. I was in love with Peggy. This beautiful, blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman had a wonderful smile and, oh my God, a very worthwhile body. I mean, a very, very worthwhile body. <sighs> Problem was, Peggy was already taken. She was involved with this 10-foot tall, 750-pound, solid muscle jock, captain of the football team, big man on campus. I didn't have a chance. But I wasn't about to be stopped. So I asked around and I found out everything there was about her. Everything. Because I knew sooner or later I'd win her over. It took the ox exactly one month to blow it. She caught him too tiny him and she was devastated. Just totally devastated. Bill was there to pick her up. I brought her the chocolates she liked, the flowers, took her out to dinner at the places she enjoyed. We went for some wonderful long walks. It was great. And then Lady Luck really shined on me because I'm walking down the street one day and here's this marquee, Romeo and Juliet, her favorite movie. Took two seconds for me to cross that street and get up to the box office. Now at that time, money was pretty tight, but it didn't matter. This was for Peggy. And so what if I just paid twice the amount for these tickets and you would in a normal theater? I ran back up to the dorm and I called her up. Hey, Peggy. Yeah, Bill. I'm picking you up in half an hour, taking you someplace special. This is just for you. <laughs> Ran back, showered, shaved, poured on the mandatory 16 gallons of English leather that may be the true freshman, and headed down the hill to pick her up. You know, it was no small feat getting her past that marquee and those posters that we all know so well without her seeing it. I did it. Got into the theater, found two seats in the middle, and sat down. <sighs> now I tell you, back then I was a little shy with women, but that night I confidently put my arm around her. And then I looked around that theater because I wanted to see if anybody was there that knew me so that they could see me with Peggy. I really wondered why we were the only ones in that theater that were a couple. But before I had time to think about it, the lights go down and the screen comes to life. And there they were. Oh, the two of them, 40 feet tall, two naked, jiggling breasts. Two of them. <laughs> but it only got worse because soon the two became four. And these two women became excruciatingly intimate with each other. <laughs> I'd never seen Romeo and Juliet, so I wasn't sure what was going on until these letters came from the screen. Romeo and Juliet. And then this little subtitle. Their secret sex lives. <laughs> I think that's when Peggy left. I was shocked to say the least, but I went after her and made it as far as the lobby before I, hit, before I hit this brick wall and looked around and realized at the upcoming attractions and the posters that they had for the present films that I had taken Peggy to an adult art theater. Oh, my last vision of Peggy was her racing back to the safety of the campus never to speak to me again. 
Anyway, if anybody's ever seen that movie, please give me a call because I really, really want to know how it ends.